Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm sharing seven new, very easy Christmas treats that you can whip up in no time with just a few very inexpensive ingredients. They're perfect for a stress-free, fun afternoon in the kitchen with your kids or grandkids. So let's get started with some Jello crusted marshmallows. As you can see, this is a $2 treat. I bought two boxes of Jell-O in Christmas Colors store brand. Those were 50 cents each and a 99 cent bag of marshmallows. And that's all you need. You're gonna start out just putting your Jell-O into a Ziploc baggie. I found this was the easiest way to do it. You're gonna take your marshmallows and just dip them into a bowl of warm water. You wanna get them saturated pretty good. Then you're just gonna roll them around in that jello. Now I tried a few different techniques. At first I started rolling them in the bag, but I do find the perfect technique for this, just a few marshmallows in. And I am wearing gloves because jello's bad to stain your hands. I did decide it was much easier to do about three of these marshmallows at the same time. And I have coated them pretty well in some water. I just put the entire box of Jello in the baggie, zipped it up with the three marshmallows, and just gently tossed it and shook it. This coated them so much better than trying to roll them around inside of that bag. It worked perfectly, and it is a whole lot cleaner for little hands, too. Look how evenly they got coated, and look how pretty those are. You have just a little bit of the crusty edge you can see on those. I put them on a baking sheet that was lined with wax paper. Took them a couple of hours to get completely dry. Here's all our little soldiers all lined up in a row here. Look how beautiful they are. They sort of glisten with that little bit of sugary outside and they tasted so good. They tasted like a peep. These are so fun. I could totally see doing these at a birthday party with kids. You could customize these to any color you wanted. I also bought some skewers to put them on, but I kind of liked them all just piled up on top of each other mixed in. Two dollars. Super fun, super delicious. They taste a lot like a peep. Tonight we are making a very, very easy little treat. This is hot buttered Cheerios. This is a really old recipe. I'm using regular, just store brand Cheerios. You could also use the cinnamon ones that would give it an extra kick. But you tell me, what young mom does not have these ingredients in her cabinet right now? So I'm gonna let Patrick put this one together. Okie dokie, Patrick has melted a half of a stick or a quarter cup of butter in a heavy skillet here. He's gonna add in a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Now he's gonna stir that around in there. Now he's gonna put in four cups of our Cheerios. He's gonna stir them all around and get them coated really good. And you're gonna cook these for about five minutes in this butter. You're really just toasting them up is what you're doing. Okay, Patrick says there's gonna be some of them that's dry. He's adamant we need more butter. So I'm gonna right chop some up in here. We'll just have to let him like toast a little bit longer. Put that down in there and let it get melted. And this ain't supposed to be like a praline caramely kind of dessert. This is just like a snack. Yeah, I would have melted my butter in something else and then poured it in there. Yeah, but I do the dishes, so <laughs> I just melted in that. I don't think you guys will be able to hear it, but we can hear it beginning to toast up and I can smell them. Can you smell them, Dad? Mm -hmm. Like they smell good. We did cut ours up just a little bit, but we're watching them real close. Oh, look, look. Yeah, you can see they're starting to get toasted. Look how pretty and toasty they look. Once you get your Cheerios over into the bowl, they're nice and warm. I'm gonna put in a fourth a cup of sugar. Just dump it in there or sprinkle it. He's a very delicate creature. <laughs> and then you're gonna put in a teaspoon of cinnamon. There you go. Now put a lid on this bowl and you're just gonna toss them in it. Okay, moment of truth. Patrick, let's see what we got in here. He says all the sugar's not gonna stick to him, 
that it's going to be in the bottom of the bowl because they didn't have enough butter. I was wrong. Oh, look at there. Look how wonderful. They're still warm, too. Let's have a bite. Mmm, that's good. Those are yummy, aren't they? That's good. That is a great little snack. Super cheap. Stuff you have on hand. Your kids will love shaking this bowl. You know what this takes me back to? That's right. Nursery days at church. <laughs> when the kids were little, you'd stay in the nursery, and uh, you always gave them Cheerios. I would have used just a little more butter. A little more butter? My dad would have stuck. Yeah. Of stuck butter. Once they're toasted and in the bowl, just put some melted butter on them then after they're toasted and get them a little wet and then it would stick maybe. You know what? Well, you need to just put these in a bowl with some milk and eat this like a bowl of cereal. Yummy, yummy. Again, we're going with a cereal recipe. This is going to be a caramel crispix. Again, very simple ingredients, just your regular baking staples. And I'm going to let Patrick do this one too. This recipe called for this big family size bag of Crispix. We're actually going to half this recipe. So this is half of that. This is nine ounces. Well, Patrick had to leave. <laughs> you know how that goes. He got called out there, had to go do something. But I have melted my stick of butter on a medium high heat. And I'm going to put in one cup of brown sugar. Okay, now that my mixture is starting to boil, and I'm going to stir in a quarter cup of light corn syrup. Also going to throw in just a quarter teaspoon of vanilla there. Now I'm going to put in a quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and this should make this mixture like puff up really big and double in size. Yeah, here we go. The baking soda makes this get puffy, and this is what helps it like actually going to like set up on the cereal and not just stay sticky. I mean, it'll be a little bit sticky, but it's not going to be like Good. Now we're going to pour this over our cereal. And just stir it in lightly. You don't want to stir it too hard so your cereal, you know, doesn't like break into pieces. I actually think I'm going to get my spatula back out. Because it is such a light little turner. Now we're going to turn this out on some wax paper. If you have parchment paper, just be sure that you spray it before you put this on here so it helps it not to stick. And this is cooling a whole lot quicker than what you think it will. Like it is already cool and already tasted a little bit. And let me tell you, those Cheerios, yeah, that's the snack you're going to give your preschoolers so they're not up all night. This stuff right here. This is mom and daddy's cheap candy right here. <laughs> this stuff is good. I'm not in a single layer, but that's okay. I'm just doing the best I can. I'm gonna let it sit here a few minutes and then I'm gonna come and toss it once. Now these were just sitting here a few minutes and I'm just gonna come in here with my hands now and give them a good little toss and spread them back out. I wanna make sure everything's getting coated. And like I said, these are a little warm, but they're like, this is like no problem at all to come here with your hands. Let them sit here for a little while. After just a few minutes, you can come back and break them apart. You just want to store them in a bowl that has an airtight lid. These are so good. I swear, I will not be wasting any more money on fiddle faddle, poppycock, or any of that stuff now that I know how easy this is to make. This would be so good to put over popcorn and nuts, pretzels, anything. I can't wait to make some more of this and experiment with it. Um, me and Patrick, we're crazy over this. We cannot keep our hands out of it. Hey friends, don't go anywhere. 
there's still more to come. I just wanted to pause and say Merry Christmas to everybody and introduce myself. If this is your first time here, I'm Mel and welcome. I'm so happy that you're here. I also wanted to let you know that this video is part of a Christmas Treats collab. It's hosted by Tamara at Southern Wife Everyday Life. I'm going to leave her channel linked below in my description box. You'll definitely want to check her out. She has lots of great food content and I'll have a link to the playlist. So if you are looking for some Christmas treats, you'll want to check that out. Lots of ladies collaborating in here and lots of great recipes. Once again, Merry Christmas. Thank you for being here and I hope you enjoy the rest of these treats. Right here is probably the one I'm most excited about. We are going to make some Ritz Bits Churros. And this recipe came from one of you guys. You sent it to me a long time ago. And I've waited all year to make this. Can't wait to try it. I think I'm also going to half this recipe. So I'm going to take two cups of the peanut butter Ritz Bits and lay them out on a sheet pan. Lined with, lined with parchment because this is actually going to go in the oven. I think I might have enough to do the whole thing. I actually, yes, I think I will. Okay, change of plans. I'm going to do the whole recipe. The one box of Ritz Bits is about three cups and I had bought a bag of the peanut butter Ritz Bits at Aldi to make this, but my husband got into them before I got it made, but I have a cup left here, so I'm doing the whole four cups. Since I decided to go with the entire recipe, I've got two sticks or an entire cup of butter melting down in here, and I'm going to put in one cup of brown sugar. When your butter and brown sugar gets to boiling real good, just going to take it off of the heat. We're going to add in a teaspoonful of cinnamon and a teaspoon of vanilla. Once you have your sugar and your vanilla all mixed in good, we're going to take this mixture and we're going to pour it over these Ritz bits. Oh, mercy. I'm just going to take a little spoon and I'm going to spoon any of this mixture up over these crackers that look like they may have gotten missed in the drizzle. There is plenty of this stuff under here to cover everybody. There will be no cracker left uncovered on my watch. Not today, friends. Okay, I've got them all covered. This is going in a 350 degree oven for about 10 minutes. While we're waiting on our crackers to bake up, we're gonna mix a topping of two tablespoons of just plain old white sugar. We're gonna take a half a teaspoon of salt and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And they were supposed to be all bubbly like that. They were. Now you're just going to sprinkle evenly as you can this sugar and cinnamon mixture that we just mixed up all over the top of these before they begin setting up. This is a lot of mixture for this amount of crackers, but I'm going to go with it because the pictures that I saw, these things look really like coated coated in this like thickly coated this is the last bit of it and now we're just going to let them sit here and cool and then we'll come and break them apart these little ritz bits are so delicious this one patrick he just described it when he tried these he said it's too much it's just too much <laughs> they are so gooey so delicious so rich this is a perfect little treat, so unexpected and fun. My next little treat here, I'm just starting out by taking a piece of wax paper and I'm putting a little bit of vanilla frosting on it 
and I'm going to adhere it to one of my large cutting boards. This little treat here gets the award for this year's most unexpected pleasant surprise. <laughs> for me, anyway. What I'm doing is taking a big can of vanilla whipped frosting. I'm gonna start out by taking some gel food coloring and I'm just gonna mix this up into green. We are going to make a Christmas tree out of this icing. We're just gonna start kind of in the middle where we would have the bottom of our Christmas tree. I'm just making small strokes with this icing to get my tree about as wide as I think I want it. Just gonna slowly go across there, trying to keep it even. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then we're just gonna start layering on top of that, narrowing this in to a Christmas tree triangle shape. Once I get my triangle pretty much how I want it, I went ahead and made it just a little bit wider because I had plenty of icing and plenty of room on this board. Now I'm taking any leftover frosting that I had and I'm just gonna bulk up what I have. I'm just gonna take all the extra and put it throughout here because what you're gonna do is use this sort of like a charcuterie board and you're gonna take little things and dip into this icing. So you want it to be nice and thick so everybody can get lots of icing. Once I get all the rest of the icing on there. I'm just kind of starting at the middle and dragging to the outer edges just to kind of make the impression of some tree limbs there. Again, this doesn't have to be perfect. You know I am not perfect. But look at that pretty little tree. And I decided just to break apart some little pretzels I had to make my tree trunk. I used little Christmas toppings here just to make lights and ornaments and all that kind of stuff. I started with my bigger pieces, then I went down to sort of the medium sized pieces and sprinkled those on there, and then I went to the little bitty tiny sprinkles. Just whatever you like, whatever colors you want. If you had multicolored, that would be so pretty. It would look like colored Christmas lights, but this was what I had, so this is what I used. I did buy a box of cookies just to get me a nice star cookie for the top because I really wanted that. I baked up some of those break apart pre-made chocolate chip cookies to go all around this. And then I thought it needed some little teddy grams. They look like little teddy bears. I don't know, they're just so cute. And look how it turned out. I am so proud and surprised with myself I get in the biggest messes sometimes, but I have had a little video of somebody doing this board saved all year, and I have been a nervous wreck about trying it. But I am so proud of this little thing. I just thought it turned out so cute. And how fun would it be if you had two or three of your grandkids or your kids and give everybody just a little play and let them each make their own little Christmas tree icing board. How fun would that be? Things don't have to be perfect to be fun and to be memorable. Now let's go back in time a few months ago and I'm going to share some super easy thin mints that are made with Ritz crackers and Andy's mints. So I'm going to make some thin mints. It takes eight and a half ounces of Andy's mints and each one of these is 4.67 so I'm going to use about two boxes of them. The worst part of this recipe is going to be this right here. Each one of these are individually wrapped. I'm going to have to unwrap two boxes of these, so let's get with it. But I did want to go ahead and give you a little bit more information because once I get this melted, I'm going to be working kind of quick. But what I'm going to do is melt these in the microwave. I'll start with about 30 seconds and then stir them and then go 10 or 15 seconds at a time until they're completely melted. The only other ingredient is a sleeve of Ritz crackers. Now the recipe did say if you had the low sodium, if you could get those, that that worked great. But if you just have regular, which is what I have, to dip them upside down because you don't want the salt, this is gonna look like smooth, you don't want the salt to interfere with how the cookie's gonna turn out looking. So anyway, I'll finish unwrapping these, get them melted down, and then I'll kind of show you the procedure from there. Got this all melted down. You want to stir it up really good to get all the little mint part. 
You want to make sure that's not like showing. Now, you really, to the naked eye, it doesn't look like there's a lot of salt on here, but if you hold this just right, you can see that. So I am going to take their advice and I'm going to dip mine upside down. Put a little over the top. Oh, look how pretty. But I'm going to transfer this to my wax paper over here. Shake off any excess. It does say you can drag it along the side of your bowl to get off any extra, but Maybe we'll try that. And I'm going to put it right over here on some wax paper. And I'm just using a toothpick to kind of slide it off. Yeah, a lot comes off the bottom. I'll put you over here so maybe you can see this a little bit better. I'm just going to take a toothpick right in between the teeth of my fork. These Andes mints melted beautifully. And I'm going to do something here to these because you know what? These would be beautiful to make at Christmas time. Look how pretty. But these would be perfect if your kids like thin mints or if you like thin mints, treat yourself. These are also just perfect for kids to help you with because there's absolutely no stovetop or even oven cooking at all. All you do is microwave these mints and I will have to say these little Andes mints I'm not a real finesse type person when it comes to this kind of stuff, but these little dudes, they have melted better than anything I have ever worked with. So here I stand all by myself on a September day making Christmas Thin Mints, longing for the days of old when my kids were little and would be home helping me with this. Y'all cherish every day, cherish every day. And that is something that the Lord is showing me at every point in my life, again, right now, is that every stage is beautiful and a blessing in its very own way. Wouldn't these be pretty if you had some little peppermints to crush up and put on top? That would be so festive. I let these set up in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes. Look how pretty these are. This is another treat that I was just so proud of myself. I am not a great decorator. I'm not good at making candies and cookies, but these Andes mints melted so pretty and made these so smooth. And I tell you what, if you close your eyes, you are eating a Girl Scout Thin Mint. It's got the crunch, it's got the chocolate, and it has the mint taste. All for just a fraction of the price, and they were fun to make. I am going to share with you a good old recipe. This is called friendship tea, or Russian tea, or Russian friendship tea. And I have so many good memories attached to this one. Let's get to making it. This one, we're going to make the entire recipe because this is great to give to friends, neighbors, anyone as a gift. So we're going in with 20 ounces of our powdered tang. And I like to mix this up in a big gallon size bag and I just put it down in here to hold it for safekeeping. Now we're going in with our powdered lemonade mix. Going to do a cup and three fourths of that. Now our instant unsweetened tea. One cup going in of that. Now we're going to do one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon and one and a half teaspoons of ground cloves. We're just gonna lift this bag up out of here, zip her up, and get to squishing. I was first introduced to this Russian friendship tea by a lady that I worked with right out of high school. Phyllis brought this into work and I thought this was the most wonderful thing that I had ever tasted in my life. It's orange with the tang, and then you have your tea and lemon. This is so good, and it felt really good on a sore throat, too. Very cozy, very festive, pretty colors, and all of the taste. And this makes a lot. It's perfect to put in little containers and to give as gifts. I wouldn't take anything for my childhood memories of family fun and Christmas laughs and the ones that I've created with my own children and husband over the years too. 
I thank you for letting me be a part of your day, and I hope that these little stress-free treats will help you make some Christmas memories that you and yours can treasure for years to come. If you like this video, be sure and check out my Christmas playlist I've got linked on the screen. Thank you for watching, and I wish you a very Merry Christmas from my kitchen.